Hey everyone, Ryan from U Bike Escape, and in this video, we're checking out the Aerial Rider Rideal, an affordable yet surprisingly powerful electric bike, priced at only $1,000. So let's get into the review. Before we get into the review, if you are looking to purchase an Aerial Rider, Rideal, or any of the other Aerial Rider electric bikes, please consider using the link in the description as it helps me continue to make videos like this one. Thanks in advance. I will also have a link to our electric bike accessories list, as well as our top e-bike brands page, and finally our e-bike discounts codes page. If you make a purchase through links on those pages, it also helps support me, so thanks in advance. With that, let's get into the walk around. All right, let's get into the walk around of the Aerial Rider Rideal. Now I have to say, when I first learned of the Rideal, I kept looking for some major downfalls of this $1,000 electric bike. And I have to say, I came away really impressed. And now that I've tried the bike out for myself, I am still impressed as you'll see by the riding footage as we get into later in the video. But I'm gonna go through all of the specifications on this bike, talk about the components. I did throw a couple of accessories on here, so I will call those out so you are aware. Okay, let's start off in the front of the bike. Here we have CST 27 and a half by 1.95 inch wide tires. They have a little bit of tread, but definitely set up for more street riding. Perhaps some loose gravel as well would be fine on this bike. Though, of course, you do have a rigid fork, so no suspension as to be expected on a bike at this price point. Moving on to the brakes, we have 180 millimeter rotors. We have Tektro Aries mechanical disc brakes. This is a component that I see on many budget priced electric bikes, perhaps all the way up to the $2,000 range, just depending on the brand. But I'm really happy that Aerial Rider still went with the name brand Tektro mechanical disc brakes. Again, you'll see this on bikes much more expensive than this one at $1,000. The Rideal does come with an integrated front and rear light. Definitely a pleasant surprise. Now on most electric bikes, the front light is going to give you some visibility at night, but as far as your only light while riding at night, I would highly recommend something handlebar mounted that is a little bit brighter. And here mounted to the head tube, you can see we have AR for aerial rider, but they also sell an optional front basket here as well. They also have a rear rack and you can also get fenders if you'd like. Moving on to the cockpit here, I'll first talk about this mirror. I actually put this on for my riding footage. Just from a safety perspective, I really like having a mirror. And one of the reasons I put a bar end one is just because there's not a lot of room for the handlebar mounted due to the display being here and the shifter on the right side. And this is one of the mirrors from Hafni, a brand I highly recommend. You can check them out on our electric bike accessories list. Moving on to the brake levers, you can see they also went with the name brand. Tektro levers have a little grip here, which is nice, and the integrated bell, which actually sounds pretty good. Moving on to the display, this might be the one component that might give this bike away as a budget-priced electric bike because it is an LED display as opposed to an LCD display. So you have your power button here, and then you have your battery indicator, one through five lights there. And then you have your pedal assist, one, two, three, four, and five. And then you have a light button for the front and rear light. And then of course, power button to turn it off. You can see they did brand this, it says Aerial Rider, really small there. You can see I put a cell phone mount here. This is the cell phone mount that I have on almost all of our electric bikes. Here we have a Shimano six speed shifter. This is very basic style shifter, but again, there's other electric bikes in this price range that are single speed. So nice to have the six gears. This is a thumb shifter. So you go down, pushing your thumb up and then up 
pushing here. And the bike has a right hand twist grip throttle and it does have a on off switch for the throttle so you can turn that on or off, which is a nice safety feature for some people so you don't accidentally hit the throttle when you don't intend to. And I wanna call out some of the other frame accents here. So it says Rideal here on the top of the top tube and we have the Aerial Rider branding on the down tube here. It also says Aerial Rider on the battery as well as below the down tube right here with some other graphics. And it does say Aerial Rider here on the seat tube. And again, Rideal towards the rear of the bike right here. One thing that I've been impressed with with Aerial Rider in general through all of their electric bikes that I have reviewed is they just look great. I really love this blue color. It also comes in red and black and they also include touch-up paint, which I'm not aware of any other company that does. And you can see in the down tube of this bike, it has some shaping, which actually looks quite nice. It's not just a very simple frame, it gives it some shape. And of course, this is partially done to hold the battery. You can see there's a little cutout here so you can easily slide off the battery. This is a 14 amp hour battery. And I have to say this along with the motor are definitely the two highlights of this electric bike. Again, I'm not aware of any other company that's putting a 14 amp hour battery on a $1,000 electric bike. So plenty of capacity you'll find this size on electric bikes again in lots of price ranges, but it's awesome to have a 14 amp hour battery on a, this $1,000 electric bike. Aerial Rider includes a class two sticker. So this bike will get you up to 20 miles per hour with the throttle or pedaling. Included, we have Welgo metal pedals. Again, I've seen other electric bike brands that include plastic pedals just to save a little bit of cost. These pedals are sufficient for most people, but if you want a little bit more grip, there's of course other options that you can upgrade to really affordably. And we have a rear mounted kickstand, won't come in contact with the pedals at all, which is really nice if you're moving your electric bike around. Again, here's the Tektro Aries mechanical disc brakes. And just ignore this piece coming out of the bike here. This is actually for our child trailer. I'm gonna talk about this in a future video, but if you order this bike, it will not look at like this at all. It'll simply be a bolt attached right here. It won't protrude from the frame at all. So just wanted to clarify that. Let's talk about this seat briefly. It is branded Aerial Rider, it matches the frame, really cool. Velo saddle, brown to match the handlebar grips. And of course, they also put Aerial Rider stamped into their faux leather grips here, which is a nice touch. On the rear of the saddle, it does have a handle, and I actually find that the seat is pretty comfortable as far as stock seats go. Of course, this is personal preference. You can check out, again, our electric bike accessories list. We have a list of some of the most comfortable bike seats that we recommend and we see people purchase. All right, here's that rear integrated light. This is a blaze light. Again, at night is nice to have, but you might want something perhaps rechargeable, battery operated to put on your seat post for some additional visibility. Here's the 750 watt motor. Again, one of the highlights of this electric bike, as you'll see in a little bit in the riding footage. And as I mentioned earlier, we have six speeds here. Again, it's not a single speed. It's gonna allow you to shift down to go up hills, which is a nice benefit. And the bike does come with a derailleur guard. If you do order this electric bike, do make sure that this is not bent into your derailleur. I've seen that a couple times with various e-bike brands, and then people end up having issues with shifting, and it's just because it's actually hitting the derailleur guard. Now, as far as the derailleur, we have a Shimano Turney derailleur. So nice that they went with a name brand. This is the most entry-level derailleur you can get from Shimano, but I do find it is adequate for most riders. And of course, on a $1,000 electric bike, there's only so much you can expect. So if you want gears and you want an affordable electric bike, this might be the one for you. And I've been talking about some of the additional touches that I like about this electric bike as we go through them. What's really nice is they have a chainstay protector here. This is a neoprene sleeve and it'll just protect the frame from when the chain bounces. So again, some electric bikes won't come with anything. Some will have some clear plastic tape, but it's nice that they included it. And the front chain ring is double-sided, which again is a nice touch, not necessarily something you expect on an electric bike this affordable. 
will keep your pants from getting too dirty. And here's where the controller is mounted. They do have some metal that comes out from the frame to kind of cradle the controller. And you can see that the cables all come in from the bottom of the down tube here. And then of course go to the controller and you do have the power for the motor here as well as the shifting cable. And then on the other side, you have the cable for the mechanical disc brakes and the battery line comes in from the down tube right here. And I should point out as well, the cables from the front do go into the frame at the bottom of the down tube. Okay, I think that completes the walk around. Let's get into some first person riding footage. I'll show you the speed of this electric bike with throttle only, pedal assist, and then we'll do the hill climb test. And then I'll give you my final thoughts on the aerial rider ride deal. Next, I'm going to talk about the various pedal assist levels. And I'm also going to do zero to 20 with the throttle, just to give you an idea of how fast this electric bike is. We'll start off here with throttle only. And this is a class two electric bike. So the motor will cut out right around 20 miles or so. We'll double check it here with the GPS speed app that I'm using. This is speedometer by Cool Nix. I sometimes get that question. All right, here we go. Throttle only. Three, two, one, go. 10, 13, 16. There's 20. And the motor kicked off. We're going about 21, 22. So it seems like it'll hold you just about at 21 miles per hour. I think I saw 20 at the end there. Okay, next what I think I wanna do is actually turn the pedal assist off and talk a little bit about whether or not you can pedal this bike with no power from the motor. And this bike is a little bit lighter than some electric bikes. So it is possible to pedal. I'm working a little bit here in third gear. You wouldn't want to take it up a hill with no motor. Let's see how fast I can get it. Still in third gear. 13, 15. So that's about what you're going to get out of it with no assist. All right, now let's go in the various assist levels. I'm gonna actually shift down to first gear. We'll go into pedal assist one. I would say pedaling is very easy. I wanna go in second gear already. Some people call this ghost pedaling. Not really providing much assistance. And I was going 13, 14. Let's go Pelosis 2. And so this kind of shows you a little bit how powerful the motor is. So even in Pelosis 2, I already want to go up to third gear. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Fourteen, fifteen miles an hour going down a slight hill here. Levels off. So third gear, I'm still pedaling pretty easily. This isn't much of a workout. I'd prefer to be in a higher gear. I think I've said this in a lot of videos that we typically ride in the highest gear, whatever it is. So six gear, for instance, on this bike, and then just change the pedal assist as necessary. Let's go ahead and go to pedal assist two. This is pretty flat here. 
13, 14, 15. Again, still hard for me to pedal and provide my own power to the bike. I'm actually gonna pop up here where it's flatter as I go to pedal assist three. Okay, pedal assist three, third gear. Definitely wanna shift up to fourth here. Maybe even fifth. This is still pretty flat and I'm gonna hit that 20 miles per hour. So I would say more than likely, you're going to reserve pedal assist four and five, perhaps if you're going up a hill. And we'll get to that hill climb test in just a second here. Go to up to six gear here. One thing that's really fun, this bike just feels nice and zippy. It's fun to kind of corner. So yeah, six gear, no problem hitting 20 miles per hour, even on pedal assist three. We'll do one more quick run just with pedal assist five. Just to show you how fast this thing can get up to 20 while you're helping. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, go. I'm gonna use this throttle. Pedal as hard as I can, six gear. 16, 17, 20. There you go. And you can really feel the motor kick in with pedal assist four and five. All right, with that, let's get to the hill climb test. I'll share with you just how powerful this bike is going up a very steep hill. All right, let's take the aerial rider Rideal up the large hill that I test out all of the electric bikes that I review. I will put on the screen the specs of this hill. And you can see I have my GPS speed on my phone here, going about 20 miles per hour. It says 22, 21. And for this first one, we're just gonna go full throttle, no pedaling, see what this 750 watt motor can do. It should handle it, no problem. Still going 18, 17, which is pretty good. Getting up to the steepest part of the hill. Still going 12. So yes, this motor is plenty powerful. <laughs> it's really surprising actually what you get for a thousand bucks. 13, 11, so that's the lowest I've seen, but Yeah, this motor will take you up any hill. Of course, pedaling will make a big difference. Twelve. All right, there we go, top of the hill. How awesome is that? The slowest we went was 11, 12 miles per hour. That is pretty amazing for a bike that only costs a thousand bucks. All right, now I'm gonna go back down the hill and we'll do the hill while pedaling and I'll talk you through how much that helps going up the hill. All right, here we go, large hill while pedaling. I will shift down. Right now I'm in pedal assist one.
third gear right now. Let's go down to two. So pedal assist one, second gear still working a bit here. Let's go down to first gear. All right, now let's try increasing the pedal assist. So that's pedal assist two. Going about nine. Pedal assist three. Definitely feel the motor kicking a lot more there with pedal assist three. Able to pedal much easier. Pedal assist four. So obviously one of the nice things, there's pedal assist five, and now I'm spinning the pedal, so I need to shift up. Fourth gear, still not working pretty hard. Obviously the spike goes up throttle only, so. But I'm in fourth gear out of the six gears and pedaling pretty leisurely, going 14, 15. So yeah, one of the nice things is for a budget priced electric bike, having the gears, if you live somewhere where there's a lot of hills, you'll certainly appreciate having the gears. Now for us, when we ride electric bikes for the most part, we do ride in the highest gear. So as I've been testing out this bike, I've been riding in six gear. And there we go, shift up to six. And yeah, we're at cruising speed now. So a little bit of pedaling goes a long way. All right, now let's get to some third person riding footage and I'll give you my final thoughts on the Aerial Rider Ride Heel. So you want an electric bike, but you don't want to spend a lot, but you also don't want to compromise too much on features. I can relate. It's hard to justify spending so much money on something when you don't know just how much you'll use it. Fortunately, Area Rider is a company that continues to push the envelope when it comes to the value you get out of their electric bikes, and the ride deal is no different. Not to sound like a broken record, but the two highlights of this bike are absolutely the 750 watt motor and the 14 amp hour battery, which of course are the two things people care about the most when it comes to e-bikes. The rest of the features are just cherries on top, the Tektro Aries mechanical disc brakes, brown contrasting grips and seat, double walled chain ring, reflective sidewalls, chain stay protector, and let's not forget that the Rideal also looks great. Aerial Rider states a range of between 30 and 60 miles, and I personally have ridden 50 miles on a 14 amp hour battery before, being careful to provide plenty of my own power in a low pedal assist level. For more leisurely rides, I'd expect something more in the 30, 40 mile range on this electric bike. So what are the trade-offs with spending $1,000 or spending a few hundred dollars more? On higher price models, you might see the addition of a front suspension, probably a simple LCD display, and maybe an integrated or semi-integrated battery. But for $1,000, I don't think you'll find a bike that has the same or better specs from a reputable e-bike company. Now, if you're seriously considering the Rideal, pay very close attention to the sizing. This is the high step model of the Rideal and I'm six feet tall with a 32 inch inseam. The bike fit me quite well, but shorter riders should consider the mid step variation. I actually appreciated the fact that they didn't take a one size fits all approach with the high step model. My wife is 5'5 and just barely fit on the high step ride deal. With a suspension seat post, it was a no-go. Here are the measurements directly from Aerial Rider and I recommend you pay special attention to the standover height and the minimum saddle height. The rider height should also be used as a general guideline though I'd love to see someone 6'7 riding the ride deal. Another thing to keep in mind is weight at 52 pounds, the Rideal felt more nimble than other e-bikes I've tested in the 60 pound range. This should give more apprehensive riders some confidence and certainly make it easier for transit. 
either on a bike rack or even in the back of a vehicle with the front wheel removed. At this point, it should be clear that if you're looking at a $1,000 e-bike, the ride deal, in my opinion, should absolutely be on your to consider list. After testing out this bike for a few weeks, many were shocked when I told them the price. This is my take on the ride deal. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And just a reminder to use the links in the description if you found this video helpful. Thanks in advance for your support and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.